pleased to be on the Senate floor this evening, but I'm here to discuss a significantly tragic issue that affects way too many Americans all across our country, certainly at home in Kansas, and that is the lack of treatment for mental health conditions and in many instances the consequence that comes from that suicide. Sadly, veterans in particular face risks for suicide and unfortunately COVID-19 has increased the problem. Veterans have a higher rate of suicide and mental health issues than people who have not served in our armed services. We know there is not a single explanation or reason for suicide and there's no single treatment or prevention strategy. One veteran lost to suicide is one too many. And of course, we all have the obligation to help those who served our nation, those who fought bravely for our country to help fix this tragedy. Every day that we fail to act, every day we lose another 20 veterans to suicide. They need our help. Mr. President, I want to highlight one veteran who fought a battle with his mental health condition, Commander John Scott Hannon. Commander Hannon was a decorated Navy SEAL, and I met his family through the senator from Montana, Senator Tester. But he, like every veteran, was more than just what his service record would show. His family and friends remember him as a passionate mental health advocate for veterans. He tried to help other veterans who faced the same challenges that he did. They say he had a gentle heart and a fierce belief in taking actions to tackle big challenges. Sadly, Commander Hannon lost his fight with post-traumatic stress, with bipolar disorder, and the effects of a traumatic brain injury. He lost that fight in February 2018. He now lives on in the memories of his friends and family, and when S-785 becomes law, the namesake, the Commander John Scott Hannon Veterans Mental Health Care Improvement Act, he will be remembered even more. More by other Americans than his family and friends. I'm proud to lead this effort in passage of this legislation and its development, its creation, in the studies and efforts, the conversations that went on with my colleagues in the Senate, our colleagues in the Veterans Affairs Committee, the veteran service organizations, his family. I'm proud to lead that effort with the senator from Montana, the senator who represents Commander Hannon's family. For several months now, our committee has been working closely with the Department of Veterans Affairs and the White House to improve upon and advance 785. This bill will make necessary investments in suicide prevention. It will improve and support innovative research. It will make improvements and increase the availability of mental health care. This bill will establish a grant program championed by Senator Bozeman, the senator from Arkansas. The VA will be required to better collaborate with community organizations across the country serving veterans. Senator Tester and I, Senator Bozeman, we come from rural states and it's hard to find the services where they're necessary. And if we can allow the Department of Veterans Affairs to deal with local organizations, we have a better chance of fighting suicide. This le legislation represents a team effort and I appreciate Secretary Wilkie and David Ballinger, Kathy Haverstock, Chris Anderson for their help and commitment in addressing mental health services. The President, President Trump and his support for veterans is well recognized. The second lady, Karen Pence, has also been a longtime advocate for vet veterans' mental health, and I appreciate our conversations on this important topic. The staff at the White House at the Domestic Policy Council, Joe Grogan, Brooke Collins, Rollins, James Baer, Virginia McMillan deserve recognition as well. The Senate VA Committee is known for its spirit of bipartisanship, and I want to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for their input on this important legislation. Along with the lead sponsor of this legislation, Senator Tester, 
The efforts I mentioned of Senator Bozeman, I would recognize Senator Sullivan and Senator Tillis, Senator Cassidy and Senator Round, Senator Kramer, the presiding officer this evening, Senator Leffler and Senator Blackburn, Senator McSally and Senator Kane for their substantive contributions to several primary sections of this bill. These contributions by our colleagues range from studies on over-medication to and suicidality, the effectiveness of hyperbaric oxygen therapy on PTSD and TBI, a pilot program for post-traumatic growth, and many provisions that will provide more direct oversight of the VA to ensure the department is equipped to better serve veterans. As a result of this bipartisan legislation, it has 51 co-sponsors and it received a unanimous 17 to 0 vote in the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs earlier this year. And today is the time we pass this measure out of the Senate. I'm calling on my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to do our part to make certain that every veteran has access to life-saving care and support, the support that they need. We need to ensure that every VA Medical Center is equipped with the proper personnel, evidence-based treatment options, and the best research-informed care to fit the needs of each veteran that walks through its doors. For veterans and service members like Commander John Scott Hannon, we in Congress have the opportunity to take action to help them know they don't have to struggle alone. Our legislation will help connect these veterans and service members to more resources and provide them with the tools they need to address the challenges related to their service. To my colleagues, we have a significant role and responsibility to combat this struggle, and here today we can do our part to make certain that in their struggles, our veterans are equipped with the care and services they need to be successful to win. We must take real and urgent action to tackle the challenges together.